السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده <تصفيق> وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ربيع بن كعب was a companion of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he was originally from Mecca and he was among the first companions to emigrate And he was a dedicated companion of the Prophet ﷺ. But this companion, he was very, very poor. He didn't have anything. In fact, he used to live in the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ in Medina. And the people who didn't have anything and they lived in the masjid 
of the Prophet ﷺ, these were the poorest of the companions. And he describes himself as someone who would sleep right outside the door of the Prophet Sallallahu apartments. And he narrates that one day he was sleeping or he was near the Prophet Sallallahu apartment. And when the time came, he brought the wudu water for the Prophet Sallallahu and he would always serve the Prophet ﷺ and bring him the things that he needed. So he really didn't have a business going on like some of the other companions. All he wanted to do was to serve the Prophet ﷺ. You can think of him as a butler, as a personal assistant. Until one day the Prophet ﷺ looked at him and he said, Ask me, basically, do you have any requests that you have? And Rabi'ah said, Messenger of Allah, the only request that I have is your companionship in paradise. Now this companion did not think about the worldly. Not that there's anything wrong to strive for worldly things. But he had a very high goal. It wasn't just to get to Jannah. But it was to be in the presence of the Prophet ﷺ. Just like now, he was with the Prophet ﷺ, he wants to be with the Prophet ﷺ in Jannah. And as you know, the Prophet ﷺ would be in the highest of all ranks in Jannah. So by asking for the companionship of the Prophet ﷺ in Jannah, he's getting two things. To be in the highest of the ranks of Jannah and also to be with the Prophet ﷺ. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Is there anything else that you want? The Prophet ﷺ wants to make sure. In fact, this could have been an opportunity for Rabi'a bin Kaab to say, in addition to that, Ya Rasulullah, I want you to also uh, grant me this wish or give me this or bless me with wealth. No, he said, that's it, Messenger of Allah. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, if that is so, then assist me by doing a lot of sujood. A'inni ala nafsika bi sujood. In other words, the Prophet Sallallahu is saying, if you want to be near me and you want to have my companionship in Jannah, in the highest of Jannah, O Rabi'ah, then increase in your extra salawat. Pray extra nawafil. And that is your way to your request. Brothers and sisters, this hadith despite of how concise it is, it teaches us as Muslims that it is important to never set for yourself a low expectation, but to set yourself the highest of expectations. And many of us here we work downtown, including myself, and we work in the corporate world. And many of us, rightfully so, we are driven by our desire to be promoted, to get a salary raise, to get a bonus, to get to the next level, to jump to the next step, the next logical step in your career. And that is worthy. But brothers and sisters, as the month of Ramadan approaches, I want us to rethink and reframe for ourselves. Is there a way for us to apply that same energy that we have for our career? Whether it is by getting more certifications, whether it is going back to school and getting an extra degree, whether it is attending conferences or networking or whatever, 
Do we apply that same effort in improving our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Brothers and sisters, Jannah is not one level. It is of multiple, multiple levels. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has encouraged us not to just settle for the last level of paradise, but to ask Allah for the highest level of paradise. As Ubadah ibn Samit narrates in hadith that the Prophet ﷺ, he tells us that Jannah has over a hundred levels. And the distance between each level is like the heaven and the earth. In fact, in another narration, the Prophet ﷺ tells us of the value of the real estate in Jannah. It doesn't matter what part of, you know, people here today, they, they, they compare each other with what neighborhood they live in and how big their house is and how much it's worth. Think about the real estate value in Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ says in an authentic narration that the, the amount of space in Jannah that is occupied by a whip, you know, for the animal when you're riding the horse, that space that it occupies in Jannah, it's such a sliver. It's probably like, what, two feet, three feet, and like three inches wide? The Prophet ﷺ says, that space is, is greater and better than the whole world and everything in it. So what are we doing, brothers and sisters, to strive for that? What are we doing to get to the next level in our pursuit for Jannah? Brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ says, if you are to ask Allah, then ask Allah for Firdaus, the highest. The Prophet ﷺ, he tells us, as narrated by Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala an, that the Prophet ﷺ, he says, إِنَّ أَهْلَ الْجَنَّةِ يَتَرَاءُونَ أَهْلَ الْغُرَفِ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ كَمَا يَتَرَاءُونَ الْكَوْكَبَ الدُّرِّيَ الْغَابِرِ فِي الْأُفُقِ مِنَ الْمَشْرِقِ أَوْ الْمَغْرِبِ لِلتَّفَاضُلِ مَا بَيْنَهُمْ قَالُوا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ تِلْكَ مَنَازِلُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ لَا يَبْلُغُهَا غَيْرُهُمْ قَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بَلَى وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ رِجَالٌ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَصَدَقُوا الْمُرْسَلِينَ the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, the people in paradise, they will look at the people that are above them. And we said earlier that the distance between one level of paradise to the next level of paradise is like the heavens and the earth. And here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives us an even clearer picture. He crystallizes it for us. He said, it's like someone who looks at the stars. And these stars are in the sky. And they're shining and they're brilliant. In fact, the scholars, they explained this description. They said, it's that when you look at the star on the horizon, and then when the dawn comes and the, the, you cannot see the star anymore, and you're yearning and wondering, where did that brilliant star go? That is like how the people are when they look at the next level up in Jannah for the people above them. It's that fleeting and yearning feeling, looking and wondering, where are they? It's like a distant star, brothers and sisters. It's not the next street down the neighborhood where the property is, mashallah, an extra $30,000. This is between the heavens and the earth. And so the companions, they said, Messenger of Allah, those are the levels that only the prophets can reach. Al-Anbiya. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, by the one who possesses my soul in his hand, they can be reached by the people who have full belief in Allah and in the prophets. And the meaning of that, brothers and sisters, is that you have firm and full belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you 
rush to do the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you to do to get to that next level. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he tells us of one of the ways. He tells us of one of the ways to get to the next level in Jannah. In a Sahih Hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu he says that when the people have entered Jannah, the angels will say to them, read from the Qur'an just like how you used to recite back on earth. And for every ayah that you recite, you will go up one level of Jannah. So the question that I have here for you, brothers and sisters, is Ramadan is on our doorsteps. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to witness this next month of Ramadan. Ameen. How many of us here today have not touched the Quran? How many of us here today still do not, still have not put in the effort to say, I need to learn the language, the Arabic language, in order to understand the words of my Creator? How is it possible? that we go through life and we don't understand the words of our Creator. So, brothers and sisters, back to the Hijrah. Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he was waiting for the Prophet sallallahu to give him the green light to emigrate to Medina. So one day he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Messenger of Allah, can I go with you? Travel to Medina. The Prophet sallallahu says, La ta'ajal. Do not rush. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la'allallah and yaj'al laka sahiba. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a companion. So Abu Bakr, he didn't sit back and relax. He was proactive. This is the first step when you want to reach for the next level. He went to the marketplace even though he didn't have a guarantee from the Prophet ﷺ. He bought two rides and he fed them, basically camels, and he fed them and he got all the food and provisions ready. He was proactive. And sometime later, the Prophet ﷺ visited Abu Bakr. Aisha radiallahu anha, the daughter of Abu Bakr, opened the door. And the Prophet ﷺ entered and it was at a time when the Prophet ﷺ would not visit. So Abu Bakr knew there was something that was going on. So the Prophet Sallam, he sat down and he said to Abu Bakr, indeed Allah has permitted me to do the hijrah, to migrate, to emigrate to Medina. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he said, Messenger of Allah, as ya Rasulullah, companionship, O Prophet of Allah, yani, am I allowed to be your travel companion? The Prophet Sallam says, as Yes, you will be my companion on this journey. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, I have never seen anyone in my life cry with more joy, out of joy, more than my father Abu Bakr. That, brothers and sisters, is how you get to the next step, to be proactive. And I want to close off with another story of Abu Bakr radiallahu anha. One time the Prophet Sallallahu was with his companions and he said, there are many doors to Jannah. And on the Day of Judgment, some people will be called from the door of Salah. Some people will be called from the door of charity. And some people will be called from the door of fasting. And some people will be called from the door for those people who went out on war expeditions. Look at what Abu Bakr is aiming for. He said, Messenger of Allah, will there ever be a person who will be called and invited to Jannah from all the doors? The Prophet ﷺ, he said, and I hope you, Abu Bakr, will be called from all the doors of Jannah. Brothers and sisters, as Ramadan is upon us, the doors of Jannah are open. It is the time now to upskill and to improve yourself and to make that jump for the next level of paradise. May Allah make us among them.
ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد We ask, we ask you all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this time in need to be and to give victory to our brothers and sisters who are oppressed in Palestine in Gaza in this month of Ramadan that is approaching. Oh Allah, we ask you to grant them victory, to protect them, and to enter all of those who have, who have been killed into Al-Firdaus Al-A'la with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ibad Allah, inna Allah ya'muru bil'adli wal-ihsan wa ita'idhi al-qurba wa inha anil fahshai wa al-munkari al-baghi ya'idukum la'alakum tadhakkaroon. Udhkuru Allah al-Aliyya al-Kabir wa shkuruhu ala ni'mihi yazidkum wa la dhikru Allahi akbar wa Allahu ya'allamu wa tasna'un wa aqimu as-salam.